bitches, it's me, Pallavi, and this week on Dirty Science, we're talking about intermittent fasting. Mmm, hunger never tasted so trendy. <laughs> This episode is largely based off of a review by Harvey and Howell of the Genesis Prevention Center. That's a breast cancer reference, not a biblical reference. The only biblical references I make are sexual. And I know that there have been other studies since that one in 2016, but a bitch can only read so much. And more recent reviews didn't make significant deviations from the conclusions reached in this one. Most studies have looked at continuous energy restriction, CER. That's your basic bitch dieting. But intermittent energy restriction, IER, is restricting the amount of food you eat on some days and eating like normal on other days. Intermittent fasting, or IF, as in if you were more disciplined, Paula, you wouldn't be whoring out your science knowledge on the internet you would just be doing science. Intermittent fasting means not eating at all on some days and eating like normal on others. So that could mean fasting for one day in four, one day in three, or every other day, also known as alternate day fasting or ADF. That's that on again, off again shit. Like what you have with good but disrespectful dick. Some days you go ham and other days you just don't swallow. There's also a difference between intermittent energy restriction and intermittent fasting. Energy restriction, again, is reducing the intake you have, whereas fasting is not eating at all. Meaning that fasting can cause higher fluctuations in your metabolism and put more stress on your body. The main reason that people try intermittent fasting and similar methods is for weight loss. Obesity is a risk factor for heart disease, tumors, joint issues, and respiratory conditions. When I say risk factor, I mean something that increases a person's likelihood of developing these issues. So yeah, you could be a skinny bitch and still have these problems. Smoking is also a risk factor, and I know plenty of petite smokers. So eyes on your own plates, cunts! Are there anti-cancer effects for intermittent fasting and intermittent energy restriction? In mice, intermittent fasting was shown to decrease the likelihood of spontaneously occurring tumors. So tumors that were not due to exposures to carcinogens. Intermittent fasting decreased mammary tumor rates by 40 to 80 percent, compared to letting them eat freely. This decrease was proportional to the total amount of energy reduction and weight loss that the group experienced compared to those who were not controlled. A key fact is that the mice who were allowed to overeat on unrestricted days, such that the total energy intake matched mice who were unrestricted in eating overall, had no anti-cancer benefits when it came to mammary and prostate tumors. So overall energy consumption, even on days when not fasting, did matter. There have been other mice studies indicating that intermittent fasting decreases the likelihood of other tumors, increases lifespan, and may decrease growth factors and alter platelet production. For tumors caused by carcinogens, continuous energy reduction, aka dieting on the everyday, did decrease the likelihood of these tumors, but intermittent energy reduction and intermittent fasting may have actually been detrimental and increased tumor rates if these eating habits occurred within four weeks of exposure to the carcinogen. After four weeks, it seemed to have a positive effect. So as rom-coms tell us, timing is everything. And also, being Jennifer Lopez. Remember, all these studies so far were in animals, not humans. And don't give me the humans or animals too bullshit, because I hate humans more than I do animals. Energy reduction is thought to cause a stress response in cells that actually end up protecting them by upregulating the cellular stress resistance pathways. And this affects antioxidants, enzymes, and autophagy, amongst other things. I don't know if it's pronounced autophagy. Phage, Not gonna say it the other way though. Specifically in rats, alternate day fasting is shown to reduce tissue damage in the heart and the brain and is more effective than continuous energy reduction in protecting your hippocampal neurons against injuries. Back to autophagy. Autophagy. Autophagy is cellular. I can't pronounce it. Autophagy is cellular recycling. Cells cleaning themselves up so newer cells and components can regenerate. It is upregulated in the first 24 hours of fasting in rats, in their livers, muscles, kidneys, and hearts, but hasn't been studied in humans. And the effect of autophagy can be quite complex when it comes to cancer. Oxidative stress is associated with cancer and aging, which is why we keep shoving antioxidants like blueberries into everything we eat in a desperate attempt to swallow this buzzword. Basically, studies on intermittent fasting and intermittent energy reduction have shown both positive and negative effects when it comes to oxidative stress and antioxidant enzyme activity. So this could be an issue. And there have also been studies on animals other than rodents who have a different fat distribution and may overeat on their days off. These studies show an increase in free fatty acids and ketone bodies. Bad things. In the process of breaking down fats and oxidizing them. These 
bad things have been linked to increases in cancer. Basically, we studied a bunch of shit in rodents that may or may not be applicable to humans because of their control over their diet. But in people that were obese and overweight, there wasn't overeating on their off days. So maybe it's okay. While people have studied cancer markers in humans with these eating habits, there aren't studies that show actual cancer rates linked to intermittent fasting or intermittent energy reduction in humans. Because they're people with fucking cancer. They're trying to survive. Maybe we should just leave them alone. In overweight and obese people, intermittent energy reduction and continuous energy reduction had similar effects on inflammatory markers. Although there are some indications of greater insulin sensitivity with intermittent energy reduction. In shorter term studies with non-obese and non-overweight people, there have been potentially some benefits, but also potentially some detriments to intermittent fasting and intermittent energy reduction. Like an increased resistance in oxidative stress, but also maybe a decrease in the number number of mitochondria per muscle cell. One study showed a decrease in lean body mass and a potential for increase in body fat and everything that comes with that. I just became the Dr. Seuss of intermittent fasting. Fucking great. Weight loss has increased in groups with some sort of energy reduction or fasting and improved satisfaction with the actual diet of those groups compared to control groups. This may just honestly be because those people are paying attention to what they're eating. So what are the conclusions? Well, it seems like reducing energy intake more so than intermittent fasting may align with desired results more. In mice and rats, that means a reduction in the likelihood of spontaneous tumors. In obese people, that means an increase in insulin sensitivity. And comparable reductions as continuous energy reduction on inflammatory markers and other shit we don't have time to get into. So comparable to controlling your energy intake. Most of this data is short term, as in less than six months, and there's definitely not enough data for non-overweight or non-obese people. So we don't know the long-term effects. And what kind of foods are recommended to be reduced? Reducing carbs more than proteins or fat seems to have better benefits. But again, all of this is very person dependent, and that may actually have detrimental effects depending on your body weight, metabolism, and other health concerns. Even in animals, there were a large differences from animal to animal, even under the same conditions. Obviously, with intermittent energy reduction, on your days off, you're supposed to eat healthy and not overeat. Unfortunately, the limited and short-term data that we have on intermittent energy reduction and intermittent energy fasting indicate that we don't know if these benefits drop off over time or have adverse effects on diseases and disorders. And some other reviews say there may not even be benefits to intermittent energy reduction compared to continuous energy reduction. So again, talk to your doctor about it and do what's best for your body. But honestly, whatever, bitch, do you. Some people smoke, some people take other risks. I eat like a fucking idiot. When it comes down to it, most people are living life for the same reason. Picking our favorite ways of dying. Bye! Hey, I love doing dirty science and I love communicating science through comedy, but I just wanted to say one important thing. Text me back, Michael, you piece of shit.